Okay, so I have started tearing into this engine a little bit. I took the engine cover off. All this is 10 millimeter bolts. It just had to take one, two, and two down on the bottom takes this engine cover off. As you can see, I don't know, it wants to try to move a little bit, but it seems like it's frozen. So now I'm in the process of taking this uh, cover off or I took the valve cover off, I'm gonna take the head off now. This is just 10 millimeters as well. And I think I've gotta put a, let's see. I've gotta take this little protective cover off, which is three 10 millimeters, one right there, right there, and then one right there. And then I think all it is is four bolts to take this head off. And we're going to see the inside of the cylinder to see if it's seized up um, just from where it's been sitting with the water. Um, for, I'm really, really hoping that it's not the um, generator portion of it because I don't want to have to take all that off. But if I do, then we got to do what we got to do to figure out if this thing even runs. So, I'm going to continue with the head here and take this head off and see what we've got inside to see if it's even salvage see see if it's even salvageable. Alrighty, y'all, I took the head off and this is what I found. Let me get this gasket out of the way. It's actually a metal head gasket. How about that? Um all this rust right here. So I'm almost certain that's what's keeping it from moving. So let me get a wire brush and a drill. Scrape some of this off as well. Wipe it off and see if we can get this thing freed up. The head wasn't too bad. It was 14 millimeters. And then I had to take a couple of 10 millimeters off the top there for a bracket and I took the exhaust off, which was all 13 millimeters. So, sorry I'm not filming it, I'm just kind of just looking into this really quickly. And hopefully this is all that I need to do in order to get this thing turning freely again. Um, just clearing everything out. So, let me clean it up some and see what we might have here. Alrighty y'all, we're making progress. Let me show you what I'm doing, and I'm doing it very, very carefully. As you can see, it looks like I had some ground up, or some rust and whatnot, obviously in the cylinder there, which is keeping everything seized up. So what I'm doing very carefully, again, I gotta get it freed up somehow, and this is the best way I've found. I've got a socket and I got a little hammer and all I'm doing is I'm tapping it and it's going in so very slowly is it going in but it is going in and as you can see It is getting freed up. Let me grab a little PB blaster. We've got to be very careful to try and not score any cylinder walls here. Most of it's down there on the bottom where it's having the issues. Okay, this way. coming loose here. That's a good sign.
Oh, look at that. Awesome. Oh, that's fantastic. Alright. Let me wipe. The remainder of the rust out of here. And I'm going to take my drill here. We got to get that smoothed out as much as possible. Keep doing this a few more times. A lot smoother. Oh, that's excellent. Fantastic. Okay. So I think that, excuse me, I think that's good enough. What I might do now is go ahead and reinstall everything because the oil looks good. Oil looks good and it is full. I don't see any. I don't see any water or anything in it, so that's a good sign. Um, obviously, we don't know about the generator portion of it yet, but we do know. that it's got some horrible smelling gas in it. <laughs> um, feeling that the carburetor is pretty pretty gummed up on it. I got that free up though. So, let me put some stuff back together here, and, yeah, oh man. I guess, horrible, holy man, holy moly. Okay, let me get all this old gas out. 
and then I'll go ahead and put the head and stuff back on it because we've gotten that all cleaned out with the valves and we'll look at the car well we'll see if it'll start and after that we'll look at the carburetor situation all right so we're gonna see if we can save this carburetor again it was a 12 millimeter bolt this is not a jet on this carburetor it's got the adjustable one right here as you can see it's uh, the adjustable fuel air mix a little bit gummed up this carburetor and the main jet is probably a little gummed up as well and a bunch of dirt and such right there in the um, jet so what I would like to do and I've got to probably free it up because of how dirty it is and we got a dirty port right there as well so we're gonna we're gonna work on this thing and see what we can free up and see if it's even going to be salvageable let me grab a, a little bit of wire and see what I can do in terms of getting all this cleaned out and getting the actual needle unstuck I will look up a carburetor for this and I'll see how much it costs I might have to go that route if the if it's corroded to the point that I can't use it so let me see and I'll catch up with y'all in just a second alright so sadly and like I said I don't know if I'll be able to get that needle out anyways without breaking something which is I mean, like I said it's not the end of the world because see how corroded that needle is and then I broke off this little tab here so I will have to get a new carburetor for this it's 15 bucks so it's not the end of the world um, probably would have had to do it anyways again if I get this thing running I will keep it this will be my personal generator so I'm going to put everything back together like I like I mentioned before and just see what happens um, I'll get everything except the carburetor back on it, and then we'll start it up and see, or we'll, we'll pull it and see if we actually have something, you know, um, if we have fuel and fire. I've got, like I said, i got to free up this uh, throttle linkage on the top here, but I can do that with some lubricant, most likely. Um... The choke is freed up, though, thankfully. So that's, I'm going to get everything back together. I'll see if I can free this up and see if uh, we can get this thing started, or at least to where it will turn over and fire. All right, everybody, I got this back on. Um, and, we're, and it's pulling, which is good and it's got compression I checked that the valves on the overhead valve were moving correctly and they are so put a spark plug in it too what do you think you think it'll fire got it in the on position so hopefully if I hook everything back up it'll at least fire for us It popped on us there. Try one more time. See a little bit of fire come out the intake again. I think it'll I think it's gonna be alright. Cause again it's trying to crank on me. And I think honestly what it needs to do is to just be run at this point. Um, so, as you can see, 
it has that little burst of fire that comes out every time. So it's promising, promising. Um, let me go ahead, I feel confident enough. I'm gonna try it a couple more times. I'm gonna order a carburetor for it. See what happens. Um, and like I said, I got $15 in it. If I keep it, then great. Um, I'm gonna have maybe, if I sold this generator, probably a $300 generator, maybe even more with the Vanguard engine. So now we just wait. I'll order the carb, and we'll. Uh, I'll go ahead and wash it while I got to wash something else. But uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, I, like I said, I just think it needs to be run a little bit, which is why it's popping back through the intake because I'm sure it's got plenty of moisture there in the crankcase. Even though the oil looks good, it doesn't look like there's any oil in it. I'll test a little bit more. I'll wash it. We'll put the carburetor on it. All right, y'all. I got the new carburetor in for this. We're about to put it on. Um, it's a 715442 carburetor which I have a box just a second ago. Here it is. Nine horsepower Vanguard carburetor, seven one five four four two. Let me get some ten millimeters off here. I'm not rushing, but we have impending storm that could use that would be very useful if I got this carburetor off let's see I've got this generator running I don't know if I want to sell this one or keep it I'm not sure They're both 5,000 watts. The other one's actually sitting right there. I just put a uh, new fuel rubber piece on the fuel line. So I'm just taking off the little plastic piece here. A couple of 10 millimeters, remember, because it's a Vanguard engine made in Japan. So. this off back off again because this is the little plate that holds on holds everything on here so that's what I'm in the process of doing there we go
checking something, checking a linkage, and it's a the carb linkage, silly me. Okay. That's that. Pull this off. New carburetor. So I've got a new block here as well with a gasket. Oh gosh, they gave me like a hundred of these things. Look at this. Oh, gaskets. I guess, honestly, that's what we need. Anyways. Okay, so that's on. Put this little block on. Which goes... So it's got this little oval looking thing that goes toward the back. Boom. We'll tighten that down well. I'm sure there was nothing wrong with the old ones, but hey. Might as well put a new one on if they can give it to you, right? So here's your choke arm. This is what the carburetor looks like. We're going to put it on like this. Put the linkage on here. Hopefully y'all can see the linkage from right there. So linkage, it involves putting this on. Putting the, uh, putting the spring on is probably the first or the easiest thing to do. I even put that, that is so smart of them. They even put like a little tab bend on it. That way, that's awesome. They put a little tab on it, that way it doesn't, the little spring, governor spring doesn't come off of the thing. This must be like an auto throttle or something. Because the way the throttle is, it just doesn't move, but. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Um, put this gasket on first. I forgot. Let me do that real quick. So gasket. Just be careful when you put these things on. You don't want to. Now we put that on. Another gasket. So that one kind of impedes on the little carb hole there. I don't know if that'll mess up anything. Slide, there's a little tab in the choke that it slides into, and you just push this bracket or this back, get this uh, plastic piece in there as well. Fit it right through there. I hope y'all can see most of what I'm doing here. Y'all can, good. All right. Go ahead and screw this back in too. And 
including the plastic, this little plastic cover here. Like I said, I don't know exactly what this is going to do whenever I crank it up. It's going to run at all. But to me, with a generator with a 9 horsepower Vanguard on it, I think I'll take my chances. I know I can't see it, but I'm putting these bolts back on now. Just gonna bolt everything down. I'm not even gonna put the air filter on it yet. We're just gonna. Try it out as is. Okay, this thing could really use some new fuel line badly. Because I'll show you the condition of the fuel line. I've got fuel line here, I'm not worried about it. But you see how bad that line is because it's had water in it all this time. Um, let me grab some fuel line, put some new fuel line on it. We'll grab some gas and we'll crank this thing up and see if it'll run for us. All right, everybody, it's that time. We're going to see if we can crank this thing up and see if it'll run. So I got gas, new fuel line. I got gas going down to it. There's no gas leaking or anything like that. So. Let me pull the choke. So this choke arm is actually not strong enough to move the choke on it. Weird enough. Weirdly enough. Have to pull this choke mechanism out a little bit. Even still, it's not choking it all the way. There we go. Alright. So let's see if it'll run. I don't know if y'all saw that, but let me show you real quick just in case. So this choke arm was not moving, moving very well. I pulled that little knob back. So now I've got full range of motion on the choke. So here we go.
and get a little carb cleaner. Just needed a little help. All right, let me grab the uh, let me grab the multimeter. See, we got an outlets here. That thing is quiet. My goodness. concerned because it's only getting about 90 volts let me plug something in and just see I mean turns off with the switch here okay so it does Let's see if it'll start back up for us she's stubborn that's for sure more gas in it. Alright, so the test is um, I'm going to get my AC unit out, plug it in, make sure it works with the AC unit. That's really my biggest concern because if it's hot outside and a storm comes, then I want to make sure that it's uh, powering the AC. Like I said, it seems like it's about 90 volts at the plug, which seems a little low. So I'm a little concerned about that, but 
As y'all saw, the drill works fine on all four outlets. And all I really care is that the AC works because I can plug that in the window and stay cool in the house. So, um, let me go ahead and do that real quick and I'll catch back up with y'all in just a second. But as you can see, the thing's running great. They just need a little bit of encouragement to start, which I'm honestly, I'm planning to keep this. This is a, I don't need two generators. This is a super nice unit right here. And somebody can definitely benefit from having this at their house. So, and then I got a Honda over here, so, which works. So I'm, I'm in good shape. So let me grab the AC, plug it in and see what we got here. Alrighty y'all, so you can see the ambient temperature is about 87, roughly degrees outside, Fahrenheit. I got the thing set on 66. Let's laser read here. Oops. Got, what, 60 degrees and dropping. So I got working AC, which is all I really care about. I'm going to let it run for maybe another five minutes while I clean up, and then we'll do a nice little wrap on this video here. Um, super, super happy with this. Again, I got to bolt that back on, but that's all I got to do. All right, so it's been running about 10 minutes. Um, again, I could probably stand to change the oil in it. It's a little bubbly, just from where it's been running. Man, it's a Vanguard engine. The thing runs amazing. Runs quiet, runs it's great. AC ran great for about 10 minutes. Turned it off before, obviously, I turned this off. And uh, so this is this one's a keeper for me. Uh, I'll take a nine horse. It's it's like choosing between I don't know. It's like I'm trying to think of a car analogy. It's like choosing between a Toyota Corolla or a Toyota Camry. It's like in terms of reliability it's like both of them are gonna get you exactly what you need and they're gonna do it flawlessly as long as you change the oil in it and keep good gas in it um again one horsepower but you get a better engine over there so and this is an awesome flathead it's like you know both of them are great generators i don't need two generators at my house though you know so the nine horse vanguard is staying because it runs amazing. It's even quieter than the 10 horsepower over here. But that generator portion works great and will serve somebody well. I'm going to list that one. I'm going to, um, like I said, I'm going to list that one, keep this one for personal use. Uh, just because, you know, you can't beat a Vanguard, and I'm not going to let a Vanguard leave for a generator. So, again, i got to put the... Um, air filter back on it but thank you all for watching i appreciate it as always you can catch me at ls mowers 09 at instagram and facebook right here on youtube and i hope you all enjoyed this video nice uh generator that's been sitting for years got it running today so thanks again i'll catch you all in the next video